We're starting off turn 11, and I've adjusted my board. Uh, his prospects of taking the future labyrinth are no longer quite as nice as they were. He, for some reason, he he didn't he stopped moving Annie Oakley, and the only reason I can figure he did that, she doesn't have any cards, unless I've made a mistake. Um, the only way I, reason I figure she did that is he's thinking I'll move Agent 911, um, and that'll give her an open shot down the labyrinth. I'm not going to move Agent 911. I'm going to keep him there and I'm going to keep that labyrinth to myself. Um, and I also I downgraded future from question mark to I think I'm going to take it now because he ended up um, using this vortex with Boris which is really nice. Boris feels better now. Um, he's not quite the man he was but he's he's better than he was before. Um, but he didn't score with Boris, and he's not doesn't look like he's going to try to score there with Annie, though he might later on. Um, I think I might send Marcus to the future labyrinth just to lock it up instead of going the colonial route. I think Arden Glein has a good chance of scoring in colonial. Um, Agent 911 will hold it tight, and that'll cement this lead over here for me. Um, I also. You know, I, I changed the current for force size. I now am up two guys on Rocking Horse Dreams, which is just a shame for him. He, um, I think when I first started playing this game, I made, I did a similar thing often. <laughs> it took me a while to learn from that mistake where I would charge um, the guy with the gun or the guy with the grenades, and time and time again, <laughs> you just get shot up. It's not a good maneuver in this game to charge the person with the gun. Um, it's just uh, things are in their favor because not only do they get a free shot at you, they also um, they get you know they get to do melee as well. Of course, you know he had a better he should have done better in melee. He got unlucky. He got very unlucky. A lot of uh, the, the tide of this battle has really changed largely based on his luck. I do think though that was the w one point where our, our difference in experience with this game um, really shows. Alright, and he is going to have some opportunity fire in this space. So she'll end up firing on both of them. She needs an 8 to hit him with her flechette thrower. She gets a 6. Now, damage is red against red, so she needs a 6 to pass. Seven, so she squeaks it. Uh, so Arden takes two damage. Nine one one. She needs a four to hit. Five. She hits herself. Miss. So he took this one and sat Praxian right there. Has nine one one sat right there. I think he's going to be content to just let his guys go through. And hold me off. Let's see, Annie's gonna shoot at him, which is yellow on yellow. She needs a seven to hit him. She gets a four and red against red so she needs a six to pass it's a five so she needed a seven she got a five which is a pass she does three damage to Marcus so he has four that is handy hopefully she can hunker down and hold her own here. We'll see how she does. Good old trick shot. Alright, we're gonna send Pat and Sir Gawain both over here. Boris is going to make the long trek this way, I think. Although I feel like maybe I wanna pick a fight over here. I might as well. So he gets 
six movement. I don't think I'm open to any opportunity fire, but there's nothing else for me to do. So I think we're good. Beginning of turn 12, and I made a serious mistake. I mentioned, I think, in my last little snippet, it's hard to remember what I've said because um, I send it off, and it's there's there's a, a, a lot of time passes in between filmings, but I believe I mentioned that I didn't, I wasn't sure if Annie Oakley had two cards or one. I, th I probably would have checked if I wasn't um, doing so well at the time. I'm not doing as well anymore. <laughs> um, as a result of my oversight, Annie Oakley popped a Fletchet as opposed to a cap in the buttocks of my two future brothers. First Arden Glyon by uh, Opportunity Fire when he was running around through here. Then Marcus Aris because I put him here because I was going to go Warhammer Skull in. Um, not so great for me. Things are looking a little different. I still think I, I have the lead, but... It reminds me that I best not be too confident because I'm playing against a wily opponent indeed. So let's talk out what some of my choices are this turn. And we'll just run down each person because they all, most for the most part, have an interesting choice. So let's start with the sergeant. The sergeant could easily head to the future labyrinth. However, the future labyrinth doesn't seem to be as contested as it was before. Um, I banished Pat Garrett as, as the result of a challenge that the sergeant did. I don't know if, I don't think I videoed that part, but I banished him up there and now he's going to the Ancient Labyrinth. That's fine with me. He can go to the Ancient Labyrinth all he wants. He's probably going to get some cards, which is bad for me, but you know, he's got some cards already, so I, I'm, I'm considering him a threat no matter what. But anyway, the future Labyrinth no longer seems to be in jeopardy. Um, you know, Oakley obviously is sitting here to just I think to try and plug away at Agent 911, my future guys just kind of ended up getting in the fire. I'm probably, depending on what happens with the challenge though, going to downgrade my pro projection for the Colonial Labyrinth because um, if she stays there, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time getting people through. Arden Glein might is likely to be successful, however, though, because he um, is practicing Sun Tzu. He's got yellow. He's going to have to get a nine or better. Chances are in his favor, though. I've definitely rolled higher than a nine before. Um, his main choice this turn is either to go take the challenge or go try and fight. Um, yeah, not a not a big choice for him. His only, his only weapon is this Claymore, which is great if he's in melee, but as we've seen, it's not wise to charge someone with a gun. So he's going to go ahead. We can safely choose that. That's not going to cause us too much brain burn thinking about that one. Um, Agent 911 can either hold his ground or he can move. If he moves, he gets shot at. If he holds his ground, he doesn't this turn, but he'll get shot at at Rocking Horse Dream's turn. Likely, I'm going to keep him right there because, you know, that's... Then she can spend her turn trying to shoot Agent 911. The clock is ticking. It's in my favor for the, the clock to run out. Um, so there's that. Marcus Oris. His option is to, so he's got a couple of interesting options, but he's hurting on life, and that's going to change the choice I would make. I think I might actually have done a charge with him or stuck around to shoot with his Henry 44 if he was doing, if he was much healthier, but he's not very healthy. And I'm in one of the rare situations in this game where you can run away and not get shot at because of this building. So if he moves... Um, the building acts as a wall, and she can't shoot him. So he's going to get out of dodge. I think I don't. I don't feel like it's it's in his best interest. Even though he has a, I don't think he even has a better position. What's the? Should we get a minus two to hit? Yeah, but she's a, she's a great shot. So yeah, it, it it's not in his best interest to to be wounded and having a shootout with Annie Oakley at this point in time. So he's going to get out of there. Um, question is, where do I want to put him? Uh, Boris is heading north after I banish him to to five here. Boris has a card. I don't know if I want to run in with Boris right now. So he's kind of trapped. I think I might have him head up through the stone and the fire because he's pretty well protected and he's not going to run the risk of opportunity fire from anyone. And then hopefully 
Arden will get dismissed somewhere down here. There's a 50-50 50, 50 chance he will. And if that happens, then he can pass off his um, wound mender to Marcus, and Marcus will be useful again. Um, Boris' problem is also going to confront Geronimo. Geronimo uh, no longer has his grenade, so all he has is this little tiny knife, and there's not a lot of woods and things down here. So I think it may be better for him to not even try and go towards Boris. Um, he could kind of go this long way through the swamps, but that takes forever. These swamps, for those of you who don't know the game, uh, have a movement cost of three, so he's not going to get very far if he goes through there. It's probably better if he just heads up to the modern labyrinth and uh, tries to cement our, our lead there. And I think that's what we'll do. So I still haven't chosen what to do with Sarge. Um, do I harass Annie Oakley or do I score points? What does he have? He has a sound dampener. Don't tell Rocking Horse Dreams. That's really just going to help his... Um, stealth, so if she gets a shot at him, it'll still be, if she gets a shot at him during opportunity fire, it'll still be a 7 or better to hit, which is not in um, his favor. Unless, but there's a lot of buildings, so if he can be in a building, that's great. Um, I'll think about that, and I'll just, I'll just move it. Herbin Fisher pointed out that um, Annie Oakley and by extension Rocking Horse Dreams has no idea what card Sergeant Grit has. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a measured bluff. Um, I say it's a measured bluff as opposed to a full bluff because Sergeant Grit does have some real advantages against Annie Oakley and the card isn't totally useless to him. Um, the card might help it make him less likely to get hit which um, decreases her advantage and he's got a significant advantage fighting her bare knuckle to bare knuckle. Her, she's rather pathetic um, in the melee department. And so it's a measured bluff. I'm, I'm hoping I'd rather he be she'd be afraid of the sergeant and run away. That's, that's the best thing that could happen. The best thing that could happen is actually if she runs away towards Marcus, because then he can shoot her with his Henry 44. Um, and that would be kind of the best case scenario. However, then he would be stuck in a situation where he'd likely get shot. Um, so, we'll see what happens. Alright, let's get back into it. We're gonna have Annie do some shooting. She needs four to hit, which she doesn't get. It's worth a shot. Pat will move six. One, six. And Gwen moves two, three, four, and five. Um, Boris now moves six, go two, four, five, six. All right, the end of the turn. 